Yo, what's up, Troll fan? DJ from Troll Media here. And today, as you can see, we started out with an animation and I actually made that last week. And I wanna explain how I did that. But first, I wanna let you all see that one more time, just so you can get a better feel on how I created it and try and come up with what it is yourself. And if you're new to this channel, I specialize in affordable tech, camera gear, and entertainment. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button and then also hit that little bell next to it so that you don't miss anything. All right, so now that we're back again, I wanna explain exactly what it is. So just like the title says, this is a pixelation animation. So what pixelation is, it's a version of stop motion. So stop motion is when you take the camera and you take pictures of objects and you move them over time, it creates an animation. But this is called pixelation because you're actually using human beings in it so you can actually animate it. It's a little bit easier to be honest. I mean, at least for me, it's a little bit easier because you just use an actual human instead of having to move different objects. So all you have to do is ask whoever it is that's acting in your film. For me, it was my roommate and also my good friend. And for him, all he had to do was move his body in different increments to make the animation actually exist. So what I did was I took the camera and I took different pictures in the same position, different angles sometimes, just to create movement in the shot. And the way you can manipulate pixelation animation is by, you know, you can make it seem like you're breaking the rules of physics or breaking the laws of physics. I'm sorry, my friend JD from JD Tech TV might be mad at me for saying that, but you can actually manipulate the way time and space moves because all you're doing is taking pictures and then you're cutting them together to make it seem like it's seamless, but it is still choppy of course and that's what makes this such a cool animation because it allows it to seem fake but real at the same time so here's some of the steps that i did in order to do pixelation animation and why i'm making this whole video for you all first off you want to have a camera you can use your phone or you can use a dslr camera i use the dslr camera i'm using a nikon d3200 right now myself but you don't have to use that if you don't have one on you as of right now the next thing you need to know is how to take pictures all you have to do is press the shutter button. It's kind of easy. You'll be able to do it. Trust me, I believe in you. The next step is going to be creating a story. So you want to come up with a good animation kind of story to where you can manipulate it to make it seem cool. Just like for me, I had the feet sliding across the ground. So just to make you think of some different ideas, some people have it to where you're floating in the air and it kind of stutters as you're floating in the air. That's because they had the story to where someone had to fly somewhere and then that required them to make their act or actress jump in the air and they took a picture every time they were in the air kind of around the same height and that's what creates that nice stuttery jump. So keep these things in mind. What you want to do is you want to actually group the pictures together by name or you can just keep them in the way it's named so far and you want to be able to have a program called Adobe Lightroom. If you don't have Adobe Lightroom that's completely fine. You can just take the pictures that you've taken and then you can import them into whatever video editor that it is that you're using. I use Adobe Premiere but you can also use free editors that are out there like DaVinci Resolve from Blackmagic or you can use other kinds of free editors that are out there like Wax 2.0. Now that we've covered that, I want you to think of different ways you can edit your video together in order to splice the images and create that seamless video or should I say pixelation animation. This video is actually called Gotta Have My Cherry Coke. I just had my roommate move in small increments like I was telling y'all earlier. All I did was throw them into Adobe Lightroom and then I made sure that the white balance was correct and then also any other color corrections that I wanted to do. I also raised the vibrance on the pictures because it added a nice contrasty feel to the pictures and this is a pixelation animation so I didn't want it to seem too real I wanted it to kind of have an artistic or artsy kind of feel to it so that's why I added vibrance and contrast different colors like that playing with the blacks and also the whites and the images so you know you want to think of these kinds of things when you're doing pixelation animation and this is going to get you the best kind of content depending on what it is that you're basing it on if it's supposed to be bright and happy maybe you don't want to have too much contrast and vibrance in your pictures but I did for mine this is great for doing funny things it can also be a nice storytelling animation technique that you can use for me I wanted it to be more comedic in a way which is why I based it off of having my friend go and chase the cherry coke around the room now let's get back into more of the editing side so what you want to do is inside of the video
video editor, you can either use Adobe After Effects or you can use Adobe Premiere. So the way that I did mine, I just threw the pictures into After Effects, added them as a JPEG sequence, and then from there, I rendered the video out and then I threw it into Adobe Premiere so that I can add sounds to it. And that's why I have all those sounds inside of my video and I also chopped it up some, held some frames a little longer because I actually took not enough images. I shot 278 images and then I also double timed it inside of Adobe After Effects. Double time is when you, instead of playing back your images at 24 frames per second, you play back at 12 frames per second, which it would be doubling because now it's gonna hold each frame for two seconds instead of for one second because it has to compensate for that lost time. But it made my animation look smoother instead of really fast and choppy like it was at first. So these are things that you wanna think about when you're doing pixelation and animation animation, as well as any other kinds of stop motion and object animations. So another thing to think about is all the sounds I use in my pixelation animation was from the YouTube sound library, and I think it sounds great. So if you manipulate the sounds that you can get from there enough, you can make them actually sound extremely well. So I'm really happy about the YouTube sound library. I really suggest that everyone utilizes them as much as you can, and that you can come out with great productions like I did with this. So you know, just keeping that in mind, these are great things to think about. That's pixelation animation for you. So if you like this video, please let me know down in the comments just letting me know exactly what you liked about it or anything else I can help you all out with and then also please go ahead and hit that like button and also subscribe to the channel if you want to have any more content from me and as I always say thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time peace